All right, so we're back now for the first day of the training. This place was a mess. You guys know how it is once you unbox all these packages. You got styrofoam all over the place, different plastics, and everything was a mess. So first thing I did this morning before Patrick got here was get everything cleaned up. That way we're able to work in this area because this was chaos yesterday. So right now, the first job we're gonna be shooting is a Jetta. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and probably get it prepped out before he gets here because I know he's coming from down south and uh, that's gonna be probably the normal prep. If not, I'll let you guys know once we get it in the booth, but this will be the first day of the training with Patrick, and he is gonna have me certified, he told me, by the end of the week. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a camera on top of my head, that way you guys can hear everything he's telling me, and we'll go through this as if you guys were getting trained with me, because I think this will be very helpful to anybody out there that may be in using Glazerit or maybe wants to learn about it and then you can go back to this video and get some of the points that you may have forgot when you guys got training as well so i think it's going to help me as well as you guys so hopefully we're going to have a nice outcome this week and by the end of it we'll be certified and we'll be ready to roll once he leaves me all right so these are the parts for the jetta everything's going to be off the vehicle we got a new hood we've got a new fender we had a little bit of repair on this here fender that we primed already, so that's ready to go. And then we have a new bumper and a door. This door is damaged, but we wanna go ahead and get it blended out. That way we know our color is gonna be matched, especially when we're trying out this new system. I wanna try my blends, I wanna try everything, and I wanna make sure that our color is gonna be good. You guys see here on the back, it's pretty beat up, but we want our repair to look good, and that is all prior damage. So. This is the parts. We'll go ahead and get them prepped out real quick. We'll do our normal 800 on our blends. We'll do our sky pad on our primed bumper here. 400 on the E-coat and then 400 on the primer and 800 on our blend fender over there. So let's get it prepped out. All right, so we've got everything prepped out and now we're gonna go ahead and wait on him because I wanna make sure that we go over all the cleaners with you guys. Yesterday we were talking about special cleaner that goes on the e-coated parts that he was telling me actually softens up the e-coat and you're gonna wanna make sure that you use that stuff on the e-coated stuff because I was asking him, I said, do you guys have the sealer that sticks to the e-coat without sanding it? And he says, yes, but we also have a cleaner that is gonna let that soften up the eco and that way you have a better bond with it so that's definitely one thing that i was happy about that basf has as well as the ppg is that their sealer does stick to the non-sanded parts i always sand the top but it's definitely a time saver when you don't have to stand underneath the hoods or inside new parts and you can go ahead and get that etch right from the product itself so we'll wait on patrick and then we'll start cleaning it and going over the things that he wants us to use for the cleaning process all right so we got patrick here and we were going over the prep work and uh, he'll let you guys know right now how he wants it prepped out what we did was fine uh what are the grits that you guys recommend for eco would be uh if you're going to seal it 400 da Painted panels is five to 600, uh -huh. and your blend panels are 800 to 1,000. Okay, so I was telling them earlier about that special cleaner for the E-coat, so I didn't clean anything, I just got everything prepped out, so that way when you got here, we can go over the cleaners, and then start with the system and start everything rolling. So, how's that look so far to you? Yeah, it looks good. We're going to clean this with 541-5, uh -huh. and uh, then we'll clean it with our waterborne cleaner last prior okay. to sealing. And yeah, I like cleaning. using the water too to cut static down. I noticed it well helps it on dirt. It does have anti-static yeah. properties in it. All right, so we got everything ready. We'll start cleaning it. We'll show you guys everything. I'm gonna go ahead and put this on. That way you guys are gonna be in the uh, POV version of what's going on here today. So let's get this uh, day rolling. Mm -hmm. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and get our bottles ready with the uh, cleaners in them. And you guys see here, we got the nice USC pump sprayers. I like the old style pumps just because they put down a lot of product. You guys know I was using the pump sprayers. 
the old school, but these are gonna be nice and they'll be labeled that way we'll know what we're using in here. So we're gonna be using the water base cleaner. This is similar to what we were using already. 701 in the water base. And then I guess this here is our solvent silicone and tar remover, the 5415. So we'll put those in each of these bottles, get them labeled up, and then we'll be ready to clean. And it's nice, they give you these labels ready to go you don't have to mark them with the uh sharpie or anything you just go ahead and stick them right on there and that way they're labeled they want you to do that also because if somebody picks this up and doesn't know what it is they can have a problem with them so it's also a safety thing so i like that already and then we'll uh, get everything loaded up Hood. right the back side you're gonna wash last with this okay because i want that to soften up that eco you don't really have a good mechanical scratch in it uh-huh so we'll go for chemical adhesion right so we'll wash this last within 15 minutes i want seal on the back side of that so it'll stick to okay. it okay and then we're going to waterborne bumper and all the other panels outside waterborne okay. last okay sounds good so if you had some primer uh-huh on here there is primer here actually so 541-5 i don't really want it on our primer okay because that lifts the edges it's okay. so aggressive oh. it'll lift that edge a little bit and you'll see it okay so waterborne this then if you got primer yeah. there because right. you already waxed and greased this right, before right, right, primer, right, right correct right. yes okay yeah i usually wax and grease first and then when i'm in the booth i use straight water usually yes so if but on the eco you want on the back side for sure Yes. because you want that adhesion with the uh long as you have already done it once with the solvent cleaner you're good you're good okay you can just do water okay that's how i normally do it yeah all right so that'll yep. be the same yep. all right let's get it cleaned up waterborne cleaner the same as we had in the ppg it's just their version of it and then we have our uh wax and grease we're going to go ahead and hit the new panels with this to go over it that's what they want you to do as well as the back sides and that's going to help it bond so go ahead and get it cleaned up nicely and then we'll do our normal waterborne cleaner i'm happy that they do that that way because i'm a big fan of the waterborne cleaner to cut down on the static so we are using the microfibers and you can't tell that this stuff seems to actually soften it up like he was saying so it's wiping it and you're actually feeling it slowing down the microfiber towel which is kind of weird to uh actually feel once it's wiping it and cleaning it so seems like a good cleaner so far with the uh, solvent all right we've got our e-coated parts with the uh solvent because i did hit these earlier with my normal prep saw that we were using before so now we'll go ahead and hit everything with our waterborne cleaner with a different rag, of course. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and get our waterborne cleaner on it. We're gonna go ahead and use our microfiber. You guys know we always start out on the blend panels because it's the cleanest part. And then you'll have to go into your regular sanded parts. That way you have no problems. So yeah, we got some pressure on us. It's nothing like learning a new system and then having them here because these guys are veterans at this. These guys have been doing this a long time and they've been training a long time. So even though we've been painting a long time, when you meet new guys and you're learning a new system, it's always a little bit of pressure on you because you want that job to come out really nice. The last thing you wanna do is have a bad paint job, especially on your first job spraying a new system. So I've done this many of times changed lines and dealt with different paint reps and most of the time they've been really nice guys and at the end of it all i've actually become good friends with a lot of these guys because the biggest thing in anything when you're doing a trade when somebody tells can tell that you actually care about it and you're very interested in becoming better and learning it they're willing to teach you and they're going to see that you're a guy that they want to actually have on board with their new system and that you're gonna be a very good painter. So the biggest thing in life is caring about it and then you're gonna be a lot better off. So don't go into it with a bad attitude. Listen to what they tell you. And once you get rolling, yes, you will tweak things a little bit your way that you guys know that all painters do. 
once we get rolling with the system. But in the beginning, you're better off starting out at home plate and listening to what they tell you. That way you have their rules, their guidelines, and you're able to go back to that in case you do have something go wrong. If they just come in here and let you do whatever you want, you're gonna have a lot more problems. So follow the rules and uh, you guys should be good. So we've got everything clean. We're gonna get the boost started up, blow and tack it like normal, same steps as usual. And then we'll go ahead and start mixing up our sealer and get this thing rolling. You can hear me, we got the booth on. We're gonna go ahead and blow and tack it and uh, get this thing ready for the sealer. We're gonna go ahead and verify the color. That way we can see what sealer to put down on it because they have their shades that they want you to use. That way you have best coverage. So we'll get over there now, we'll buff it up and uh, we'll get our reading with it. In this with their waterborne, get anything off of it. And then we're gonna go ahead and uh, buff it up. Compound it if it's necessary. If you see that there's a panel that looks very old and aged, hit it with the compound and then hit it with your step two to cut down on the scratch with it. So they really want you to clean it and buff it and polish it up nice. That way you can get a nice reading on it. So this car is not too bad. We'll probably hit it with a compound and then the polish just to do all the steps. So let's go get the buffer and buff it up. All right, we've got one on the pad. You guys see that? We're gonna go ahead and hit it with the one. Make sure you're on a flat area. If you're on a curved area, your camera isn't gonna sit right and you're not gonna get a good reading. It's gonna rock back and forth on you. So go ahead and buff it up like normal. We did it with that one. We'll change our pad. We'll hit it with step two. You guys know I got the cart that's mobile with everything battery powered. That way you're able to go over to the job quick. Not have to worry about cords and get it buffed up. All right, we're ready to go. We'll get the camera and shoot it. All right, this looks like the one I had, so it's gonna be familiar to me. We hit it right in here. I told them, make sure you get a flat area. That way this yeah, sits so down nicely. You don't wanna go here. So you right, wanna go I right did here. right in here, right. So we're ready to go. Yeah, you cleaned it with 700 more? Yes. After you buffed? No. No, you have to do that. Clean it again. Yes, because that waterborne cleaner is gonna take the dyes out of the compound and the glaze off that clear coat. If you don't do that, the camera's gonna pick that color up from the glaze okay. and throw it into the formula. All right, so you see, this is why we're learning, guys. This is why we're here. Let me go get the cleaner. Make sure you hit it after you buff it. Don't just wipe it with the rag. Patrick was telling me, clean it first and clean it last after the polish. So we're ready to go now. So this one's just like my old one. You got the positive. The plus button. Right. And there's three. Right now we're on average of five. So three would be good, better, best. So SMC is the best, but it could take up to 12 camera shots. We have it at five. I see a difference. I see that BASF emblem in there. All right, we got our five shots, hit save. What I like to do is put your RO number there. Go ahead and put your RO in, that way you have it saved if ever times you had to mix up some more paint or something like that, so. Now will this log it to the job being we're putting it in here? Save, now we're gonna put our manufacturer in there. Now we can save it. Now it's ready to be transferred. All right. You guys seen how we had it held on that panel and I didn't lift it. He was telling me every time you put it up and you put it back down, it refocuses and it might give you a better reading. So go ahead and get that thing lifted up. Make sure you hold it still while it's red. And then when it's green and done, lift it up, put it back down on the panel. And you'll see the little A for automatic show up. So we got it plugged in as normal. And uh, we'll get on the computer here and see what we got. We're gonna go to scan, transfer measurements, transfer last measurement. Delete it from the camera, yes, because once it's transferred, we don't need to store it in the camera. Okay. Here's our color. We're gonna go to search criteria. So it's a metallic color, it's Volkswagen, and you can put the color code here if you want. Right. Or you can just hit search. Right. So remember guys, with this line, there's no chip. So you will be using the camera on everything. 
So you got to get very familiar with it and uh, get it dialed in. We're going to hit details here. We're going to pull up five different formulas and we're going to look at this spectral curve. So our spectral curve is here. Our target is what the camera saw. On the left side is our match. That's a real color in our data, data from BASF. And the green line is our adjusted line, what the software seen and adjusted it. So this will be a real color. Right. It's a Volkswagen color, yeah. LA7W. LA yep. And then it picked a red so variant. What's the, what's the match number on that? Does it give you a match number or no? What do you mean by a match like number? How, is there a scale where they, want, where they know that it's a good color? Right here, it's 94%. Okay, and what's, what do they like? It's, it'll be the green? Anything, when it's green, it's a blendable match. Okay. Anything over an 80% will be green. Okay, so now, what would, now would you go with the adjusted or would you go with the... Uh, I would go with the match. It depends on the spectral curve down here. Okay. You can see, we're gonna blow it up a little bit. Uh, so this is going to be your 25 degree angle. It basically, it's more head on, face, and All then right. your flop will be down here on these lines. So that green line is above our target. It's gonna be a little lighter on the face, but you, you will never even see that. And our match is pretty well following that blue target line pretty close. So we can actually hit details again and look at a different variant. This is a darker, dirtier variant. Hit details, and we can look at this spectral curve. So that looks pretty good too. So the green is us? The green is the adjusted. Okay. Red is, is a real color. That's your left side, real color. Okay. And the blue is? Our target. Okay. So we can hit this look at a different one this is an 87 it starts off at a 94 right. but sometimes These you might, might find a better color oh. match down here with the lower number it just depends on that spectral curve so that line is what you want to get tight you want to follow that target line as close as you can without crossing okay. if you got to cross that means you got a, a pigment a color that's not quite right if okay. it's a hard cross do we have a cross here to see it? We have no crosses. We can hit detective. There's nothing. It's a, it's a clean. You got one over here in the violet on one of the angles, but it's just touching. I'm not afraid of that. It's just a hard crossing. These right, are so really this, good spectral So curves. this is a good a good uh, camera shot. You know, LA7W is a very familiar color. I'm sure they got this dialed in. And we got a 94. We'll start out with that. So now let me know what we were talking about with the sealer. So we're gonna click this, take it to mix, yes. Add an RO number. So can we gonna, steal it from the camera or we no? We can, it's right up there, that's why I do it. It's the sealer there, L03. Yep, and we're, we are going to make this ready for use. So we're gonna click the 100 line, two to one. That adds our reducer. It's ready to go. Now you're just gonna see it, how many ounces you want. We're gonna need about, we're gonna need about. 24 ounces, I would think. I would do 26. I mean, I'm I'm used to mixing 24 and then it hits 30. Okay. So 20. that might, you know, we're only putting one coat in a drop, so I don't know. Right, you're doing back side of the hood, front side of the hood. I would mix as much doing a, a full cup. A full bumper. I'd probably mix 28. I don't want to be out of it. I know there's a lot to do with uh, putting it all on and having the paint ready with this system, ain't it? Yeah, you don't want to run out of color. All right, so what, what Patrick was telling me, this one thing is different about this than the PPG. They, they do recommend you shake this product. So PPG didn't want you to shake their product. And the other thing you guys are going to see here, we don't have the blue tops. So we're using a 200 micron PPS cup on top other than the blue 125 micron. This is a thicker paint and they want to get those metallics through there. And that's a good sign because that means that this paint is a lot cleaner than PPG because PPG had a lot of stuff in their base and they needed that fine filter to take it out. So I'm thinking that may be a good sign. You guys see it getting locked in there. That's going to hold that PPF safe in there without it falling out. I like to put my handle like this so it won't fly out. If you leave it up, it'll shake loose. All this right. way, it won't shake loose. It won't rattle loose? No. Nope. How long do you want that shaking? A couple minutes couple minutes but a real toner before you spike it needs to shake for at least 15 minutes 10 to 15 minutes 
That's very important. here we got mix and scan patrick was letting me know on we're going to go to mix because obviously we're not going to be camera shooting the sealer great shade i have done that before so but we're not doing it this time we're going to go ahead and hit LO3. this three lo3 is a recommended uh shade taking it adding the ro number next what are you thinking about for Make that it sprayable see here 16 ounces yeah that should be plenty okay. you're only doing a fender in both sides of that yeah. hood and uh, maybe 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 14 and you're gonna do your bumper yeah i can get through that with 14. okay you're gonna make it sprayable so you're gonna i put sealer in here for you so you wouldn't get confused all right click sealer it added your hardener and your reducer we're gonna put our amount 16 ounces w gonna, will it will it already know i'm in that ro now oh i gotta always put it back in just gotta click it. Once it's already in there, it's all about just clicking the box. Where's the box? We passed it. Let me start. Are you in the box? So you didn't log it in? I did. Oh, you did. Okay. It's there. Okay, so good. And now we'll, we'll go over mix. all that later. And put your cup on the scale and hit enter and weigh it up. Okay. And now the sealers are where on the bottom. You got the two sealers here, and these are the primers, right? Correct. So we've got our white. Where's the oh, the white? Yeah. Okay. You got your white and, and your black. black. All right, let's and go we ahead. We are making a light gray. We're mixing up what? 14, 16 you said? ounces. All right, it's calling for the white first, obviously. That is 934. 72. 72 for that. <laughs> now we've got our hardener, the uh, normal. Right here, 53. 929-53. That's the only hardener that goes in that sealer. Okay. And that's different from the primer too? The primer has its own hardener. Do you have any tops of these? I do. Now we got a reducer. 35291. Is that the only one they want for that? Yep. I'm going to have this down here maybe. Like this. I'm going to change up some of this here. Do you guys have any jugs for that water? Oh, that's so that's the one there. All right, All right we've got it mixed up. Now let's see what we can do in here in this booth with the uh, sealer. What do you recommend on that for pressure and uh, application? Normal sealer code is normal? Get coverage? Yep, 20, 25 PSI. Uh, distance will probably be uh, six to eight inches away. Okay. And do your thing? Yep. All right, let's get this thing sealed up. For characteristics, I wanted to ask him about, is it direct to uh, raw plastic or anything as far as adhesion to bare metal and all that? Let us know about that. This sealer is an Adpro sealer. It has adhesion promoter built into it and it's pre-flexed. Nice. So it can go over raw bumpers, prepped and treated right. Right. And it can go over sanded eco. One sealer does everything. It has a 12 hour or eight hour pot life at 70 degrees. Right. Down here in Florida, it's probably going to be like five or six because it's so hot, you know? So you can leave this in a gun if you had a job coming in yes. very soon, yeah. within an hour or two. Five hours. So you could basically almost use this all day. All day, yep. Really? And I did hear that from the, somebody. Some parts of the country, they do use that all day long because it's 70 degrees at eight hours at 70 degrees. So. Huh. All right, so let's go ahead and get this thing uh, sealed up. Series 2, that's the one that we're going to be using now. And this is the one set up for the Hunter line with the BF air cap and the uh, setup that they want you to use inside of it. So let's go ahead. We're going to let that flash off good. We'll check it. I want to see how nice the edge is on that door there. You guys see we seal the edge like I normally do. Well, I want to feel it with the tack rag and see what it looks like. So we'll let it set up. Then we'll get back in there, check that, maybe tack it, maybe not. And then uh, we'll go in over the application with Patrick for the base coat. All right, so I'm in here now just checking the edge. I wanted to feel the edge with the tack rag. It definitely has a nice transition on the sealer. We are real close here on this side, so I want to take as much off of there if there is a little bit. 
of overspray on that. So feels nice and smooth. That's what I like to see. And uh, I don't think I'm gonna tack anything off. I might rope, run over the edge of this here blend door just to see what it's doing. And then uh, we'll roll with it. Nice and smooth. Hardly any overspray, right? Yeah. But you guys seen what I normally do, turn your gun. Don't come here and stop because you're gonna leave a spot. You're gonna come off and leave a spot, leave a spot, leave a spot. Turn your gun sideways and it's gonna bring a nice transition on the end of your sealer. Looks really nice and smooth. All right, so we have a new guy that uh, came along for the video and uh, he is director of paint shop performance with Crash Champion. So I'm actually a little nervous. I got this guy here, I got this guy here and they're both checking me out and uh, we can't perform yet because we don't know the system, but this is Tim and uh, we're gonna go in the booth. He has a lot of knowledge when it comes to the BASF as well. That's why he's here. And uh, we're gonna go in the booth now. We're gonna have Patrick go over the application of this here product. All right, so now we're gonna go over the application here with this uh, 100 line. We are using the WS Series 2 setup for the product. Let's go ahead and let uh, Patrick tell you guys how he recommends this. So your application for this full fender will be starting at the bottom. Your first coat is going to be your coverage coat. You're gonna do a nice wet coverage coat. Hitting six your to, edges. Six to eight inches away, edges first. And then as soon as you get to the top, you're gonna to pull your gun back, double the distance, and you're gonna do a finish coat coming down. 80% overlap. All right, so what I was talking to them about and they were letting me know is the main reason why they want you to put all this paint on at one time and they want you to get it to lay down is for your color match. You want each panel to be put on the same way. That way, once your panels get put on there, you're gonna have a match. So the next reason is because they want you to put it all into the wet bed so that you do not have your metallics standing up. So there's a lot of stuff online about this stuff going on. But to me, I think it's pretty basic. They're basically wanting you to get everything put on exactly the same. Make sure that the product is wet and that that stuff is gonna lay into the wet bed so you do not have your, your uh, metallic standing up and giving you the wrong look because it's kind of like years ago if you were to paint something with solvent and you didn't have the wet bed on the edge of your panel, you could see a halo with the metallic standing up. So it's basically some of the old school ways that I've done years back. And uh, I think we're gonna go ahead now and start hitting it. All right, so their wet bed is already ready to go. It's ready to go out of the bottle. So that's one thing I definitely like so far. You guys know our wet bed in the PPG, we had to reduce it down. And this stuff here is ready to go. They do have a standard, and then they have their X series, which is gonna be a little slower. So we're going right now with the standard. I'm gonna shake it up. Not sure if that's what they want you to do, yes. but we're gonna go ahead and uh, pour it in this cup. We're gonna be using both of the series two Iwatas on this for the wet bed and then for the base coat. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get our coverage on our panels that we're gonna get full coverage on first. Then we'll get over to our blend panels and we'll get them uh, handled right away. We're gonna run it at about 26 to 29, they're saying, so. Looks like right there.
Arizona. All right guys, so you guys seen me putting the paint on. You seen Patrick yelling, put it on wetter. We turned the lights off and we did see some areas that were not covered. So I don't wanna lie to you guys. I'm not familiar with putting on the base coat as wet. He wanted to spray it first to show me the application. I said, let me try it out. I wanna be the one using this stuff to see how it's gonna work. If we have a problem, that's fine. That's why he's here to teach me how to use this product and I'm showing you guys everything that is going on here at the shop. So we let it flash off, we mixed up some more paint. We're gonna go ahead and apply another coat to all the parts, that way we know we're covered and uh, that's how we're gonna do it. So we wanna make sure that this job is covered right. It was my first one, we went too light with it, we mixed up some more and we're gonna go ahead and get this thing knocked out.
All right, so I think we got it a lot better with that one. You seen Patrick, give me the thumbs up. We put it on a lot wetter. You gotta change your mentality when you're using this here paint. And one tip that Patrick told me when I was spraying that hood was, he said an old timer told him years back, when you're spraying a hood, put the hose over your shoulder because it's gonna cock up the back of that gun. That way you do not get a heavy spot at the bottom. And that is a very good uh, tip that he told me because those Iwata guns, they have such a big fan that they have, it's very easy to have that do that because you're having that thing just kicking down a little bit. Whereas with the other guns with like the O's pattern from Sada, you don't have that big long pattern and you don't have to worry about it as much. So big tip for that from Patrick, we're gonna go ahead and let this thing dry up and then we're gonna be hitting it with the clear coat. All right, so this here's the clear. We're gonna be using the 460. That is a multi-purpose gloss clear. And then we're using their normal hardener, the 929-93 hardener. That is right there. So, and as well with the normal reducer. So we got it in the uh, cup. We're gonna go ahead and mix it up and then we're gonna get clearing it. So that's what I'm talking about. That's that Glazer Clear that I remember. You can never forget the smell of that product. So, so far we've got one coat on it. We're using a Series 2 gun. It looks nice and clean. Metallics look good. I'm really happy. Even though I had to put on another coat, I want to learn what happens when you don't do it right. I don't want to do everything right while he's here. Then he leaves and I have a problem. I want to do it the way that I would normally do it. And you guys got to remember, when I go in that booth normally, I don't think about what I'm doing. I'm so used to doing something a certain way. It's hard for me to think about painting cars after all these years. I just go in there, I paint them. I'm usually listening to music and the job comes out nice. So I got to think, slow down. You're not using the same product. Slow it down, put it on more like clear. Give it a nice, slow control coat. It's not like the old PPG control coat. So we just got to think about that when we're basing it out. Everything else as far as the sealer and the clear is just like the other stuff, maybe a little bit better. So this week is going to be all training and hopefully by the end of the week, everybody's happy, Patrick as well, and these jobs are looking good. So I'm going to go ahead and put one more coat on and then I'll show you guys the job all finished up. All right, so in the end, the job definitely came out nice. We're gonna go ahead and bake it. We'll pull it back out and we'll see how it looks as far as the modeling. And then I wanna really give a good look at the color and the orientation of the metallic being that was my first job. So those guys went and took a lunch. I'm gonna go ahead and eat and then we'll pull it out and we'll see what it looks like out of the booth. All right, not too bad for my first one. What do you think, Pat? Looks good. Not too bad. Everything looks nice, the metallic laid out good, and uh, it's just the first day. This is the first job we did. We have all week to get this stuff dialed in. Pat's gonna be here with me. And you know, he was like Mickey in there in the old Rocky movie, yelling at me. More wetter, more wetter. Get it done, Rock, get it done. So he's, a, he's gonna push me, and at the end of the week, we're gonna have everything running smooth. So. I hope you guys like the first day in training with me and Pat with the Hunter line. We'll see you guys on the next one.